Hey, my name's Lucy. I'm a third year PhD student in Oxford's Department of Earth Sciences, but even after two years here, sometimes I find it hard to shake the feeling of being an imposter in my own department. That's mostly because I didn't study for an Earth Sciences degree, or even take any of the conventional A-levels required to study it. The footage in this video I took during a field trip I taught on last month with our latest intake of undergraduates, and even though I've demonstrated the course before, even though I really enjoyed myself, I couldn't help but wonder, did I have the right to teach Earth Scientist undergraduates when I myself had never been one? My undergraduate was Physical Geography at Durham. My A-levels were Geography, Geology and Biology, but it was always Earth Sciences that I wished I could study, and I would have had I not unwittingly taken all the wrong A-levels for it. I was fascinated by deep time, by the most mysterious eras of our planet, so I didn't really enjoy Geography all that much. And when I decided to do a PhD, I knew that was my chance to start over again and begin one in Earth Sciences. This I knew would mean catching up on years of study of those hard sciences I'd missed out on, but I wanted to do it. And now here I am, two years in, and this video is about, well, how did that work out? How have I coped? Has my change of discipline ever held me back, or has it been easier than I thought? A good thing that's really surprised me about studying simple you is that even my peers with geology degrees, they forget things and have to teach themselves as though from scratch. Often the kind of chemistry I need to know doesn't require a degree on the subject, just a thorough read of a few chapters. No one was born knowing this stuff, after all, so my learning it several years later than my colleagues doesn't mean I'm incapable. A downside from this is that it's not always that easy. Sometimes you really do need all that background. An example of this is when my supervisor put on a thermodynamics lecture series. I went determined to understand. I made notes, I read the material, I asked questions, but when it came to actually doing examples myself, I found I didn't even have the basic level of maths. By the time I'd got help, the week's problem sheets were replaced by another, far more advanced set. I fell behind, and I'm not proud to say I didn't attend another lecture, because after that first one, I couldn't understand a word. I now actually need those thermodynamics for a paper I'm writing, and with help and patience, I am slowly getting there, but there's no denying that this is far harder than if I'd completed modules on it, like our second years have. Coming back to the teaching, like I was doing here in Pembrokeshire, this is the one area where my not having the same degree as my PhD isn't really a problem, it feels as though it is. If an undergraduate asks me a really tough question and I have to look it up, my natural thought is, oh, I should know this, even as I see other PhD students with geology backgrounds looking things up themselves. So apparent problems are as often as not just in my mind and nothing to worry about. I'm not expected to know everything about earth sciences, the same way I'm not expected to know everything about physical geography. But I will be honest, for me switching subjects has been a hindrance more than an advantage. But it's been manageable, and most days I feel like I'm doing fine. The skill sets I gained in my undergraduate feel like unusual tools that might come in handy at later stages of my PhD or career. They're not a waste of my time, they're just lying dormant for now. The act of switching disciplines in itself really just means that you bring not one but two perspectives to a new project. And whether or not you find both perspectives are useful, you will always have them, and you never know when either might come in handy. If you are considering changing subjects for your PhD, I would suggest you measure up what the advantages and disadvantages would be. Are you willing to put in extra work if needed? But even if the answer is yes, answer honestly whether you will be able to. Like in my case, it might be harder than you'd think. Do remember that no one is born knowing anything. Remember the whole point of a PhD is to learn something new. I still don't understand thermodynamics. Perhaps I never will. But I can now call myself an earth scientist. And I do have the right to teach these new undergraduates. Thank you for watching this video. Please tell me what you thought of it. Share your own experiences or advice or generally come and say hello in the comments or by catching me on Twitter. And please do subscribe if you'd like to see more PhD related content and calamity. Until next time, take care.